See Reno TV. See RenoTV.com. I'm Bob Noxious. We're here at uh, Kate Rowden Bush's meet and greet for her uh, big opening of the Guardian of Eden art project that she had out at Burning Man. We've been working away for the last week here, getting this thing installed, polishing it, getting all the lights hooked up. Hi, uh, my name is Kate Roudenbush. I'm here at the Nevada Museum of Art in Reno, and I just installed uh, my sculpture straight from the playa at Burning Man. It's called Guardian of Eden, and um, we are here celebrating the, the deb debut of the first sculpture to come straight from Burning Man into a museum. So I am totally thrilled, and I've been going to Burning Man for nine years now, and I've it's changed my life like so many others, and I am absolutely over the moon to be able to bring that energy from the playa and put it right here um, in the plaza of the NMA. It was built for Burning Man for the Green Man theme. And the Green Man theme this year had to do with, of course, ecology and how we relate as human beings to our, our planet. And um, the way I came to the sculpture was by, by thinking of our, our planet and creation myth. And I was thinking of what the world was like before we got here to screw it up, basically. And so I researched a whole bunch of creation myths, and the most extraordinary were the Eastern creation myths, and what they had in common was a lotus flower. And it being such a time of change uh, on our planet right now, of ecological disaster, and um, basically, We've reached a point where we can't sustain our current trajectory of our impact on the Earth. And what I wanted to do was harken back to the time before we existed. And I researched creation myth, specifically uh, Hindu creation myth, Egyptian creation myth, the, real, the ones with the most history. And I found that in, in, at, what they had at, at their core were, were that life, bloom, life bloomed when a lotus flower bloomed. And creation myth in Egypt, one of the creation myths, was it all started when there's a primordial sea of nothingness, which is really a, a theme throughout all creation myth. But there's a primordial sea of nothingness and darkness at the first uh, appearance of dry land, a lotus flower grew. And in it, when it bloomed, in it sat the sun god, Ra, and through his light, he, he created, he set into motion the birth of the world. In Hindu, in Hindu creation myth, um, there's actually um, cycles of time. It's not just point A to point B, or whenever time ends. I don't know, even know if it does end. It just changes. <laughs> we are in the Kali Yurga, the fourth and final chapter of many sequences of time. And the Kali Yurga is characterized basically by um, e uh, ecological disaster, um, corruption by our leaders, and uh, poverty and disease. And I thought, well, <laughs> we can just open the paper and use that as a checklist because that's exactly what's happening to us and on our planet right now. And what happens at the end of every chapter of time is that Vishnu returns, he destroys everything, and starts the cycle of creation anew by meditating in, this, in the chaos. And as he meditates, a lotus flower grows from his navel up into the air. And then it opens, and the creator god Brahman sitting inside. And Brahman looks at the chaos and with one gesture manifests the birth of the next era of time. And I thought, my God, if a lotus flower blooms at 
Burning Man or in this world that we have created for ourselves, what would it look like? And who would be sitting inside it? And I thought that it would be a lotus flower that wasn't, you know, a beautiful flower in the in the traditional sense, but it would be something more fierce, something more of a guardian of sorts, a protector, something that looked under threat almost. So I decided to build um, <laughs> an 18 foot tall steel lotus flower um, with, with these almost tribal carvings of the elements of fire and air, actually inspired by the Buddhist depictions of air that formed a, a goddess figure that reached up into a globe that gets illuminated at night, but during the day, it reflects the world completely upside down. And at the seed pod in the center reflects all of us surrounded in this lotus flower, this seed of creation, and also the seed of enlightenment in Buddhist, in, in Buddhist culture. And what I wanted was to create a place, a gathering place, where we as human race could come and meditate and really think about that if we were the creator gods, if we were the guardians of Eden, this Eden, this place that was given to us, what kind of reality would we create? What kind of world would we create? Would it be the world that we see now? Or would it be different? Would it be better? Do we look at the world now and, and think, wow, if I could have created this world, I would have done a lot better? I think most people would say yes. And so it is really kind of a statement that the Guardian of Eden is, Guardian of Eden really is not the sculpture, it's us. And that it, it's really up to us to, to create our own reality and to, to guard that is so, the world that is so precious to us that is disappearing by the second. And I hope that it becomes a gathering place for hope and for action as well. And I'm, I'm really honored that at Burning Man it was exactly that. And people, people got married there, people had amazing drum circles, chanting, didgeridoos, um, some wonderful spiritual experiences. I watched the lunar eclipse from the seat of the lotus flower. And um, I think that when we create something as artists, we have, we have a duty to really say something, to meet and, and to say something and build it with that intention. Because when you build it with that, with that truth, that it manifests itself in its, when, you, when it's brought to reality. And I, and I, uh, I think that's, that's what artists really need to be doing now in, in the world that we're in because we are, we have that kind of responsibility, that social responsibility and that gift to be able to, to communicate through art and through experience of participating with that art, um, creating the world that, that we'd like, that should be not the world that is. It does look great. It's a beautiful piece of art. See Reno TV. See RenoTV.com.